great weekend. Um, I kind of have something I need to get off my chest, which we kind of talked about in passing and in text, but I'm happy that all my friends like care about their health and like are doing like all this shit that like su- supposedly helps them. But in my day, you dropped out of a massive heart attack at 32 and you liked it. And everybody posting themselves hopping into these cold plunges it needs to stop. If you want to do it, I have no issue with it. I I hope I hope you do it every fucking day of your life. But watching a 30 year old man emerge himself into a small tub of ice submerge, water, submerge, submerge himself into a small body of ice water, a, a kiddie pool kind of feels gay. It does kind of feels a little gay. That, it's definitely gayer than liking men. So I just think that me personally, I just am done seeing it. I just had to get that off my chest. So if you have anything that you want to add on, you can, but we can hop into the episode. No, I'm right there with you. Um, the more power to you, if you do it, um, I personally take cold showers, but I don't set my phone up and record myself in the shower. Um, I'm not, what's that dude's name? Drew Wells. Yes. Yeah. Um, 2024, I guess, is the year of Drew Wells, and everybody's trying to be on that. We don't need it. No. We don't need it. I- I'm happy you're doing it. Good for you. It feels great once you get out, but not everything needs to be put on Instagram. That's all I got to say. All right. I just think that this only fitting thing to hop into immediately is the Eagles absolutely crumbled. Yeah, so, it so was probably the the only other collapse in sports that I can think of um, is the Warriors blowing a 3-1 lead and the Yankees blowing a 3-0 lead in the playoffs. Um, other than that, it really doesn't get much worse than what we witnessed the Eagles do that second half of the season into the first round of the playoffs. It was really bad. It was <laughs> like, really bad. Yeah. I, I, you, have you ever seen that meme of that guy like in the shackles and they're breaking free? Yeah. Yeah, that's like kind of how I felt when the game was over. Um, I'm I I love the Eagles and I love football, but I can't even consider what they did football the last eight games of the year. I mean, it was just piss poor on both sides of the ball and i have a bunch of notes but i'll i'll save them to see what your thoughts are yeah i think that like well one this was a game that i had right uh during our predictions it just like i said it it we are watching the worst team in football like every week so like let's take advantage of it like their favorite it their favorites they shouldn't be like let's take advantage of the fact that we've watched the worst team in football nick marcourt before the game said that eagles minus three was the easiest bet in american history um he said that teams losing their last two games go like something in the playoffs like undefeated or something in the first round of the wild card he gave some like ridiculous stat and i i just rebuttaled with it and i said what are the what are the actual what are the stats on the team losing to the two worst teams in the NFL back to back going into the playoffs? I mean, we watched. Them I think lose. one of those teams was the Ravens, and they didn't have Ray Lewis. I don't know, but regardless, they lost to the. We watched them lose to the Cardinals. We watch them absolutely no show against the Giants and yank all their starters. Um, yeah, it was bad. I I I don't have much to say other than I genuinely like deep down believe that this is kind of like the Brandon Staley effect that we kind of watched happen in in Los Angeles over the last like few years transpire, where if you have a very bad crumble. It it lingers along in that locker room, and maybe maybe Sirianni can overcome it, and we'll shut up about it. But 
my initial thought and feeling was probably like, okay, it's probably time to move on from Sirianni because he completely lost this team. He made two awful hires at OC and DC and then lost to the Baker Mayfield Buccaneers who at the beginning of the season, everybody pretty much said were was they were going to have a top five pick their their win their win over under was like set at like four and a half which was the same as the cardinals like they're really bad that was like a really bad team and they played above expectation and for them not to be able to handle business against them i just think it was a really bad loss so my final thought is if the eagles are actually serious about progressing with this roster and these great young players i think that you automatically need to make a change at a head coaching change with all these names on the market uh move on from Sirianni and get a, a fresh face in the building and take over I know that he just went to a Super Bowl last year but I think he's proven that the two coordinators that were there with him during that run were a pivotal part of making that happen yeah those it's pretty evident that those two guys at OC and DC were what kept this team well, what made this team, basically. I mean, from a talent point, they really didn't lose that many players, um, at least on offense. Their offense was pretty much the same. And if anything, they got better, because I think DeAndre Swift is a better running back than uh, Miles Sanders was. Um, but I think it just goes to show how poor of a coaching effort it was if Nick Sirianni, who is known for being an offensive minded coach goes out there and puts on that type of coaching performance from an offensive perspective week in and week out there was no adjustments made the entire season um they had no answer for any blitz i i i mean i feel like i'm I, i'm having deja vu like talking about this because it's been the same shit um like I like we saw against the Giants and so on and so forth, but I I'm starting to agree with the fact that he does need to be gone, and the I think that because he's considered an offensive mind, and this offense was so bad, it just goes to show that he doesn't really know what he's doing. Like it, it's one thing to go in and make an adjustment and say you lose in a shootout, right? But we haven't seen that this offense hasn't put up like 20 points in the last eight weeks of the year. And that's really, really bad. And I don't want a situation where Sirianni comes back, they find a good OC and then a good OC is gone. And we're right back to square one. I think they need to find somebody that knows what they're doing on the offensive side of the ball, because we see these offensive coordinators literally fly off the teams. Like, there's a lot of there's a handful of OCs this year that are going to leave teams and be options for head coaching positions. Maybe not necessarily this year, but within the next two years. And I think if the Eagles sit back and don't make a move and try to find a better offensive minded coach, then I think they're going to be in the same situation in maybe two or three years if they do find a good OC somehow. So yeah. I, I think something needs to change. Defense. I mean, you would have thought they never tackled, practiced tackling or learned how to tackle in their whole life. There's a certain part of defense where it's also mindset and just like being gritty and getting a job done that you can control effort. You can control effort. And even if you're out of position, you can still fly to the ball and tackle. And they, weren't anywhere close to that it you would have thought they played in negative 30 degree weather like the goddamn uh dolphins the dolphins didn't want to tackle a soul and neither did the eagles so truly everything that happened in that game i expected um i knew that game was going to be over when the second half started and um they turned it over right away um it, it's just bad i mean they the only person that deserves any flowers for that game was Devonte smith um and maybe nolan smith a little bit on defense but other than that like everybody seemed so disinterested and it was just really embarrassing to watch yeah i i completely agree with you uh fully so 
Um, I saw some sad about like how many screen passes they ran throughout the season and finished with like negative 26. And you're right. If, if your call to action is being an offensive guy and it seems that like if he felt that the offense wasn't doing well, if that was to make a change or even if it's a play calling thing, like him taking controlling control of the play calls, we saw them make a change at defense. They didn't do that disappointing way to go out for the Eagles. And man, I just think that they have a lot of free agents and they have some tough decisions to make. So we'll see how they bounce back from that. But yeah, I, I think, I think you were spot on. Yeah. What else did I have here? Um, yeah. I mean, I pretty much covered it. I pretty much summed it up. Um, I saw a report after the game one thing that the eagles hate doing is running the football even though they're good at it and i saw a report at the end of the game saying that the way that the bucks were lining up on defense was not allowing the eagles to run the football that's a bunch of bullshit i mean there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to run the football on occasion regardless of how the defense is setting up, unless they're putting 11 guys in the box and not covering a single wide receiver, flying the safeties down to five yards off the football, you should be able to run the ball, especially if you have a very solid offensive line like the Eagles. So that was really disappointing to hear. Um, just a really bad. Yeah. I think half season. I said, I saw you say something about like bringing Deandre Swift back. You're like, I bring everybody back with Deandre Swift. Like, DeAndre Swift had like two good games all season. And I know that they didn't use him periodically throughout the year, but like if every single time you're just going to get into the red zone that you're going to hand it off to, or you're going to do the Jalen hurts run or like a uh, quarterback draw, like man, like it just feels like anybody can play running back on that team and it not be not really matter that much. It just seems to be like running backs, not like a point of emphasis and, I don't think DeAndre Swift like crushed it this year by any means. And I think that he like played decent, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what the Eagles can possibly do other than I think that, like I said, and you kind of said it too, they need to make some serious adjustments from, a, from like the coaching and whether that be from the head coach, I mean, they're definitely going to hire new OCDC, but we'll see how that pans out. I'm going to disagree with you on the DeAndre Swift take because he was fifth in rushing yards um, in the NFL. But, I mean, I get your point. There's no point of signing, like, a running back long term like that if you get it to, like, the five, ten yard line every time and just completely abandon handing him the football. I just don't, like, um, he didn't make a difference. Like, DeAndre Swift never, in a, in two games this season, I think he, like, really snapped. But other than that, like, I didn't really see him making that big of a difference like for this offense. Like, and I think that's a fair statement to say. And it even got to the point where they didn't trust him for like pass blocking situations where they had to bring like Kenneth Gainwell in. So if you can't trust a guy to be in there during like key passing down situations and things such as that, like, like I said, unless you can get him for like literally the, the minimum, like he has, I think, up to this point, DeAndre Swift has severely been like underwhelming throughout his career. I'd probably say from like kind of what he's been hyped up to be like with fantasy and like him as a player. And like, it's, I think that he's played underneath of his expectation. And I think that he probably got it, got, they got a lot of out of him this year, but if that means that they have to pay him money, like real money, think that's probably safe to just go and grab somebody else yeah i mean i'm i'm not gonna sit here and say that i want him for 12 million dollars but like a couple mil i i would probably be okay with i'm also i you also have to realize like i guess it doesn't make sense if you have a quarterback that runs as much as he does but i don't really know like what the deal is with Jalen. like he did not look like himself running the football really at all this season so I I don't know what the long-term answer is as far as a running back. Um, I think a better option is kind of having a running back by committee anyways, but I certainly wouldn't hate having DeAndre Swift on the running back by committee group 
Um, but I, like I said, I I told you this when we were texting. I also just like DeAndre Swift as a as a player. Like I think he's fun to watch. But so there's like bias behind that. So you're, you're, I don't think your mic's on. Can you hear me now? It just doesn't sound on. Well, it's definitely on. Um, hold on. Oh, it did turn off. How about now? Yes. Yeah, so what I said was basically I think a running back by committee is better anyways, but I wouldn't hate having DeAndre Swift in that running back by committee group. Um, I also am biased because I, I enjoy watching him play, and um, I, I like just like him as a player. So that's kind of why – that's also why I want him. Also, we just got breaking news. <laughs> the Cowboys yeah. are keeping. I had that in my notes that I thought they were going to keep him. So, if we want to, yeah, I was going to go. I was going to go in. My, I would. I saw that too. I was going to go in and say the, the. Let's talk about the Cowboys crumble. Break the McCarthy news. I mean, they crumbled this weekend. That's fine. But with that being said, and and I talked about this with with a few people. Like Mike McCarthy is like. Like, I get that it's funny to, like, make fun of him and stuff. Like, dude, like, he's, like, a really great head coach. Like, um, let me pull up his all-time record. What do you think the Cowboys need to do to take that next next step? Because it's been 20-plus years of what we saw on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, I think it's simple. I mean, did Dak, like give away like two easy balls like yeah and that wasn't ideal but it seemed like the entire back half of the season dan quinn's defense got completely figured out and it showed this weekend when they played the packers and another another move that they made was they signed brandon cooks this offseason okay he was an okay ad they thought Michael Gallup would would step up and take on that Amari Cooper role. You look back at it, you're probably like, mm, you probably should have kept Amari Cooper. Um, and then you lose Trayvon Diggs and you lose Zeke Elliott. You think Tony Pollard's going to step up and be a true war, uh, true workhorse back? And I think he underwhelmed literally everybody this season, um, in fantasy and in real life. So I think that what it comes down to is like play. And when you have a matchup in the playoffs, the it switches and like it's not like regular season football at that point. It's kind of like you think of like playoff playoff basketball, how the game like slows down or whatever. They clearly saw something against the Cowboys when they did the coin flip. They uh, they won it and they wanted the ball on offense. They drove down and scored a touchdown. Like they must have, they must have seen something to have that sort of confidence against like a DQ defense that was like, okay, like let's get, let's get this ball. We're gonna go down there and we're gonna fucking score. And this play, the air is gonna come out of this place. And that's yeah, exactly. It was, I was gonna happened. say it was a, a bad bad showing for Dan Quinn, who's likely out of there this off yeah. season. And and I get it, like the the there's this is this kind of ties into like the dolphin situation too so but at a point like you have to sit there and be like okay like what happened throughout that course of the game did Dak throw some bad picks absolutely like they were out of that game like that final score does not indicate like how that game went at all him throwing for 400 yards was great but it does not indicate how his game went it was a lot of garbage time yards. Like that game was not realistically a two score game. That game was probably like three and a half scores. Yeah. And you can't from the McCarthy standpoint, sorry, I'll backtrack a little bit from the McCarthy standpoint. You can't win 12 games back to back seasons or three seasons straight. Like they're, they're winning the division. They're, they're really good. Um, this was probably the best that the Cowboys have looked in a few years. Like they looked 
nasty this year. But and it's not like they there's just they, they just can't figure it out when they get to the playoffs. It's the same yeah. it's the same song and dance every year. But it's not like and you don't look at the you didn't like look at what happened with the Cowboys over like the course of the season and feel like McCarthy has has lost these guys. Like you saw right after the game when Dak stood up in his presser and was like, "Why would we get rid of McCarthy? Like that's my guy." Like when you have active backing from like everybody on the team, like everybody likes him, like they're really good during the regular season. Like you you, you kind of have to keep that guy. I mean, it's I know that's like kind of ass backwards of what we were saying about like the Eagles, which is funny, but like, I mean, th- there was a one game difference between the two and the Eagles season ended significantly different than the Cowboys season. ended. It's all about like vibes, like the vibes around the Eagles were so bad. The vibes around the Cowboys were great. And I think they'll continue to be great. I mean, bro, I like after the game, everybody's like, man, Dak is so ass. Like the Cowboys need to get rid of them. Like blah, blah, blah. This happened the third. Dak's a top eight to six quarterback in the league. And like, unless if you can somehow get the, like where they're picking in the draft, you're not going to be able to get a quarterback. So unless if you're going to be able to get these guys above him, the quarterback conversation is so stupid. Like Dak is probably going to resign a massive deal to stay in Dallas because he's got one year left. Like, He's a great quarterback. He proved he, honestly. I think he should have won MVP this season. Like, there's nothing that indicates that Dak shouldn't be the quarterback. Like moving forward, and bro, but if you're if you're that great, like then go win a playoff game. Yeah, go, I mean, go play in a Super Bowl. Like if you're that great, that's what the great ones do. I, I'm not saying Dak is an all time great quarterback. He I know, but I'm not season. I'm not even saying all time. I'm just saying like if you're a great quarterback, you win a play like you figure out ways to win playoff games, which he has not done. Okay. And it, I don't know what you do because I don't I agree you with you. Like I don't think you move on from him, but there's right, gotta be something different. The the quarter but but the quarterback situation that is going on, like two okay, we'll just talk about the dolphins real quick, like because it ties in. Tua played bad this weekend. Then everybody was no like, doubt. you can't play two, you can't pay Tua, Tua can't win a big game, like blah, 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 this, that, and the third. And it's just like, well, what option do they have? Like, this is what we talk about pretty much the entire season. Okay. They went out, they laid a stinker. Quarterbacks do that all the time. When it matters, it hurts a little bit more. Yes. But like, there's not an active plan other than like okay yep let's just get rid of Tua and we'll have Mike White start for a year and then we'll have a really bad record and then maybe we'll we'll get a top five pick and then we could maybe get a quarterback but if that doesn't work like that's not how these teams are wired what it comes down to at this point is like probably the way that you're thinking about it like if you're Dallas is like we need to establish a way better run game than what we did last season because the run was completely a non-factor for the Cowboys pretty much the entire year. And we even talked about it last week when I said was like, will I was like, I think the Cowboys can win a Super Bowl. And then I was like, unless if they come out this week and the run fact the run game it becomes a factor and they fuck up. Then Dak throws two picks this weekend and like absolutely sells the game for them. So like, but at the same time, it's a team sport. And like, if Dak's having an off night, the defense needs to step up. And and that's not what happened, obviously. But like, I'm all over the place right now. So if we can round this up a little bit, because like four questions got asked. So like, and I brought up like three different things. So I guess back to the Mike McCarthy thing is like, no, you can't fire a coach where it seems like the entire team has his back. You win 12 to 13 games a year. You win a super, you win a, you can win a playoff game. You might lose a playoff game from time to time. And if you guys play at like apex level, you are a real Super Bowl contender, which is, I think, what you can, what else would you ask for at that point? I think it'll be interesting to see fans' reactions as far as them keeping McCarthy because I think a lot of people probably want him out. Um, I think there are there might be better options than McCarthy. Um, 
I would have to like look into it a little bit more, but like the three guys off the top of my head, I think Belichick would be a better option. I don't think that Jerry Jones would make Bill Belichick the head coach there because Jerry Jones has to be the biggest dick in the room. Um, but I think, I honestly think Vrabel would be a great fit there. Um, but again, like, I don't, who knows, but, but I, real I think quick, there might be better options, but real quick, there probably is there uh, at the end of the day, like for like, I'll just use like Penn state as an analogy. Like, is there better options to hire a head coach than at Penn state? Yeah. Like probably, but like, but are they available? Is the but thing. at the same time is they could be available, but at the same time is like, if you have somebody who's doing uh, an above average, you, we would list what Mike McCarthy is doing at this point, like an above average job that they have failed later on in the season by not going and to like at least an NFC championship. But like you look back at the season and it's been like an overall successful season from like your young players are playing really well. Your quarterback's playing really well. You see guys growing, you guys are winning games like that's all important. And that's like goes back to like the vibes and like having the building and shit. And like that might be fine to like fire McCarthy, but like at a point like Dak really likes McCarthy. So like you have to kind of there's so many personalities and checks and balances throughout this thing where it's like, all right, well, this guy isn't this guy isn't killing us. Like, I don't, I didn't look at like what McCarthy did this past weekend as when the game collapsed for them as McCarthy's fault. Like, it came down to Dak making some bad turnovers and then the defense not being able to step up. I didn't view like that game and be like, man, McCarthy fucking lined Zeke up at center and through the game. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't view it like that. I know, and I agree with you there. I don't think it was McCarthy's fault, but who is the one that's normally first to go in that situ in a situation like that where you're consistently not meeting expectations as a ball club? But it's usually the coach. But it feels like I mean, Jason Garrett, like he was there he probably had, like he got like three years. He probably was there for like two like a year too long. And this might be a situation where he might be in there for a year too long. You know what I mean? Like, like should they have moved on from McCarthy this year? Maybe because there were some good candidates out there, but Jerry Jones felt like he couldn't. And then bro, what? Okay. What happens? They win 12 games again and lose in the first round. Then they're probably going to have to make a, like a change at that point. And they're probably going to be like a year too late. I think, their best bet was probably to make a decision this year on on whether or not he stays. But I guess we're just gonna have to wait, wait and see yeah, what we're happens. Have to, yeah, definitely. Um, um but I do want to give do, some credit to the Packers here too. Yeah, I was just I was literally just about to say that. I mean, Jordan Love had a an absolutely ridiculous playoff debut. Um, possibly like the best ever uh, from a stat standpoint three touchdowns him and CJ Stroud both had absolutely absurd uh, debuts in the playoffs. Um, it was honestly, I know everybody that was watching the game heard all the announcers like say, Oh, like compare him to Rogers, but it, it did look like Aaron Rodgers at points throughout that game on some of those throws. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's so probably yeah, the most, I, f most film he's watched emulates probably a lot yeah. of his game. Like he learned from him at the end of the day for the last three years. So yeah, I mean, green Bay has a great young roster. Um, Matt LaFleur has like a ridiculous win percentage. Um, he doesn't get talked about like literally at all. Um, and then Jordan love played out of his mind and like literally the, my favorite play of the game was when they were like lined up. Uh, he saw the blitz come. He checked the play, got back, uh, got blitzed, threw it off of his back foot, threw an absolute piss missile across the on a post for a, a tutty. And it was like so a sick. 50, it's like a 50 yard touchdown. And it was like Jordan loves actually really good. And that was insane. And it just goes to show you, like, it's a tale of two seasons. You were literally on social media at the beginning of the season saying like Green Bay shouldn't be on it is. prime time. And then like now it's like, well, they have some of the best young receivers in the game. And like, 
I, they have I'm their more sold on, on on Jordan Love than I was at the beginning of the season. I mean, sure. I, you how I, you can't blame me because they looked really bad. Yeah, um, they were also young. But it's crazy how how they were able to turn it around. I I mean, the Packers just go from quarterback to quarterback to quarterback and it looks like they probably have a good one here in Jordan Love for for some time and I think everybody's so. young and they're going to be able to keep these guys around for a little while. I mean, and that's like also Aaron Jones just owns the Cowboys. Every time that guy plays in Dallas, he goes off. He's good. I mean, you saw when he's when he's healthy like he's good. Like I I was shocked like I for you forget about him cuz he was hurt all season. And then it looked like he finally was like fully healthy, not in five degree weather, like in like a dome and like he like snapped. So, yeah, he's he's definitely like a difference maker. Yeah, he had, I think, three 100 yard games to end the season. And I mean, just carried it right over into the playoffs. So I had him in fantasy and it was really frustrating because I thought he was going to have a great year. And he just couldn't stay healthy. And then, of course, when fantasy's over and I don't need him to show up, he just starts balling. But like hard. Yeah, like insane, like 120 plus rushing yards every game and like a, at least a touchdown. Um, The next game that I figured that we can drive into is the Chiefs absolutely dominated the Dolphins. I mean, if it wasn't for a lucky Hail Mary throw to Tyree Kill making a ridiculous catch and after the catchability into the into the end zone, it probably would have been what's what was the final score? 26 to 0. So um yeah, the Chiefs went out and dominated. Um it's interesting because I was so hard on the Browns for having so many injuries, but never kept that same energy for like the dolphins which i don't know why and you kind of saw finally like even like when the game started like i saw that like uh javon holland was out xavian howard was out like andrew van ginkle and it's just like damn i didn't even know these guys are not even going to be playing today and it was just like seems like the defensive side of the ball like injuries added up and then from the offensive side of the ball those guys wanted absolutely no part of playing in that weather yeah i mean the injuries finally caught up to them. Um, we were deathly wrong on this game. Um, nobody it, on offense wanted to do a single thing. To that's a, also, it was a hate bet. So, but it ahead. certainly was a hate bet. <laughs> um, I will say that I don't know if I'm sold on the Chiefs quite yet. I think they looked better, but I think then I think them going to Buffalo is going to be a, a absolute battle. I mean, I we've been down on the chiefs the entire year and they finally like played pretty well, but that dolphins team was just so beat up. We know how Tua handles cold weather and handles big games. And I, I don't know, like I don't feel much different. I don't think about how I feel towards the chiefs moving forward. Bro. And, like Rasheed rice played well, but I don't, I don't know. Like because I, I feel the same exact way, but like about the Bills, like watching the Bills game this weekend. But like, it's weird because both of those teams are just like, like, I, I don't know. Like it, I don't think that the Chiefs played crazy on offense, but they did enough and the defense looked really good. I personally think that like the, the the constant field goal kicking and not getting six is going to come back to haunt the Chiefs, whether that be next game or the AFC Championship or in the Super Bowl. At some point, you're going to have to execute in the red zone, and that's something that I think that's severely lacking in like their offense right now, and that's because of the de the decline play of Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I mean, I think he looked a little bit better than normal, but he still wasn't like how many balls did he, he dropped what four balls yeah he did i'm i'm strictly talking like when he had the ball i thought he looked better than normal like he didn't look disinterested and slow like he did somewhat seem locked in i understand he dropped some passes but i think it was a better game than what we've seen i just a don't lot think this, i've ever seen season. him drop that many balls in a game ever like it was and they were like easy ones where i was just like yeah why 
why did he just drop that? Or like the one across yeah. the middle where he like half ass jumped to get it. That was like a very catchable ball. I was like, I just, it was weird, but yeah, the chiefs live to see another day. Uh, this is another to a conversation of like, everybody like hates him now, obviously because he had a bad game. Um, and he can't win the big one, etc. cetera, man. It, it, it looked brutal there. I'm not going to lie. Like it, it looked, you could tell just by looking on the field like that. It was a severely cold game. It looked and, terrible. It and looked I don't so think terrible. It, and I don't think that that's like an excuse and I don't think it should be an excuse, but at a point, like you have to just kind of look and be like, okay, the dolphins had lost both of their starting edge rushers. They lost their starting corner, both starting safeties, two starting linebackers. Tyreek Hill is in a boot all week and then runs out onto the field and plays. Waddle's been hurt. Raheem Mostert's been hurt. Their O-line finally got healthy. I don't think Tua's play elevated them that much, obviously, but it just seems like the overall health of the team finally caught up to them. And we probably should have saw the writing on the wall for this one. Yeah. That was more of a bet with our heart rather than our head. Yeah. Right there. Unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that, that game was just, I, there's no way that I would have any interest in playing in no negative 30 degree weather. No. Um, and they even had a heated field, but it still looked so cold. It looked so cold. It had um, it been so bad. I saw a couple of TikToks of like Chiefs fans going through everything that they were going to wear. And this guy had on like three pairs of leggings, sweatpants, ski pants, overalls, and then probably like three base layers, a like a quarter zip, a hoodie, um, like two jackets and then the overalls and then another jacket and then a poncho, like a, a poncho, like a blanket over top. Listen, if you have to wear that much to go outside, you should just stay inside, stay inside and watch <laughs> the game at your house. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was rough. It was cold. And that's why all fields should, should be in domes, but whatever um next game texan sword 45 to 14 this was my plant the flag uh game over the weekend um bobby slowick battled up a master class from the offensive side of the ball where you could tell that him and cj were like an absolute like sink and just he was calling a high level game and absolutely torched the browns defense um, something that like just wasn't talked about the entire week was the Browns home versus away splits on defense was like 16 point difference um, showed up in, in a playoff game. And then, of course, the Flacco luck finally ran out. He threw some awful picks. Yeah, and, they were bad. And I know that me and you texted back and forth in this game. And I said, you know, who would probably help in a game like this? And you said Nick Chubb. And I said, no, Deshaun Watson. <laughs> if anybody thinks that. Deshaun Watson wouldn't have been an upgrade and a better opportunity for them to play a better game this weekend. You're a complete hater. I I thought I told you that I think that he would have been better than Joe Flacco, but I still don't think that they would have won that game with him. We don't. Hey, listen, we don't know and we'll never know, but we will never know. But I will say that Joe Flacco looked like absolute fucking dog shit. And there was he a reason bad. why he was sitting on his couch. Remember, I told long. you last week, I was like, I think I even picked, I, I don't even remember who I picked, but you picked the Browns. I remember, I told you how yeah, you said how long backup quarterbacks been? is like three to four games and the magic finally wears off. Exactly. It's been that way the entire season. And that's exactly what happened. It was uh, bad, over the weekend. Dude. I did not, I did not end up betting on the Browns, but because I remembered that when I was going through, but I mean, the Browns defense is good enough to overcome some interceptions, yeah. but not when you're throwing pick sixes left and right. That's no, it was bad. so difficult it was bad. To, 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 to overcome. But on the opposite end, like 
the Browns weren't they could have done nothing on defense that would have stopped CJ Stroud. That guy was making every single throw. And uh, like you said, Bobby Sloak absolutely Master drew up class. a masterclass. Yeah, I think that guy's gonna Another. find himself in some head coaching um interviews. I think he might benefit from one more year at OC of the Texans. Um, kind of take the Ben Johnson route because uh, he's good. I think he's really good, and we saw how good that offense looked, um, how over, how much they overachieved this entire season. So I want to give a quick shout out to Matt Burke, who is the old Cardinals defensive line coach, who is the Texans defensive coordinator, who absolutely had those guys humming this weekend. I know that there's probably a lot of people out there that think that um, think that D'Amico is calling that D, but no, Matt Burke, shout out to my guy. He had those guys absolutely dialed this weekend, and that defense was humming. Did you see that video of D'Amico Ryans? Um, I forget who had the pick six, but right before – um, right before it happened, D'Amico was talking to him, and then like the very next series, dude went out and had a pick six. That's what it's all about. Also, is my screen flashing for you? No. Well, was it at any point? No. Okay. <laughs> dude, yeah. I'm looking at it, and it's like flashing <laughs> as if there's – like right now, it's flashing. No, it's probably your concussions, honestly. Yeah. Um, Last game – Worst game of the entire weekend was was the Bills Steelers, uh, thirty one to seventeen. It was a snoozer. You said like you watched this game and you don't feel any better about the Chiefs, and I didn't. I, I wasn't gonna say anything, but you said that, and it was like, all right, I'm gonna say it about the Bills, even though it makes me sound like a complete hater because Josh Allen had like a massive run. He looked great. But, like, the Steelers, if they didn't have Mason Rudolph playing that game, like, they were hanging around in that game, like, entirely too long for my liking. And there's going to be a point in time where the Bills are going to play a team that, like, you can't let just linger around the entire game. Do I think that's the Chiefs? Probably not. But it's just something interesting that I thought that, like, it was, like, the Bills open up so fast. They look so good. Like their first like three drives, you're like, oh God, they're gonna put up 60 today. They look so good. Yeah. And then like you're going into the fourth and it's like a one possession game. It's like, and if it's anybody else besides like Mason Rudolph against like this yeah. this defense, it's like, man, like they might not even have a chance. So Bills obviously took care of business. They beat them. They piss on them. I'm not going to sit here and discredit that, but just something to kind of think about maybe like moving forward. Yeah. I mean, I think the bills are, are definitely a good, a good club, but I, I still feel like the same about how I felt throughout like the entire season. Like they were never a team that I was like, Oh yeah, this is the best team in the NFL. I think they're really good. Um, I agree with you. I think they let the Steelers hang around way too long for my liking. Um, the Steelers also shot themselves in the foot. I mean, throwing an interception in the end zone. Um, there was another fumble, a George Pickens fumble. Um, Pat Fryermuth fumbled, and they got the ball. I don't understand the that rules was there. I don't it understand hit the that crown rule. of his helmet, and his foot was out of bounds. So I. Honestly, that rule needs to change. That's a stupid fucking rule. So same with like when the kick like out of bounds. Time, yeah, that you kick can like out lay of out of bounds and catch. Yeah, it. I think that's a stupid rule, but like it, it does. You don't see it get used that much. And then obviously like it gets used in time like that. And you're just like, what the fuck is that? So, yeah, I'm with you. That was a weird call. Yeah. Um, at the very least, if the Steelers don't throw that interception in the end zone, I, th I think they have an even better chance of winning that game um, because they were still able to kind of hang around even after that play happened. Um, but yeah, there was people that were like, maybe it's time for Kenny Pickett. And when I saw that, I was like, what the hell is Kenny Pickett going to do in this situation that no. is going to lead you to a comeback? I Kenny mean, he's more, he's more mobile than Mason Rudolph. So like he can get out of the pocket and run, but Mason I Rudolph don't know what anybody throws the football does. significantly better. But what does anybody need to sit here and think where it's like, okay, 
Kenny got Kenny before he got hurt. A uh, report got released that they were going to bench him regardless. He got hurt, whatever. Then he can easily come back and play for the last like two to three weeks of the season. Doesn't they stick with Mason Rudolph? Like, and then you go into a playoff game and you stick with Mason Rudolph. Kenny Pickett obviously sucks and is not their guy. Like, like, I don't know how clear it could be like across the board, like flat period that like a quarterback is just like not their guy in a must win game in the playoffs. Like you have a, you would rather start Mason fucking Rudolph over Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett is dead. Yeah, I, I don't get it. When I saw that, I was like, why would anybody want Kenny Pickett to come in here in this situation? This game is only going to get worse if that is the case. Um, but yeah, I I think I think if the if the Steelers also had TJ Watt, like they have an even better chance of winning, obviously, that football game. And I think it's a little more interesting. Um, but yeah, they were able to kind of hang around. I would have liked to see the Bills just really put their foot on the on their necks and finish that game out. I mean, like you said, they started off super hot and I was like, oh, this is going to be ugly. And then they kind of just like eased up and seemed a little discombobulated. But um, I wanted to ask you about the Josh That's Allen right. run. What like did you think that was a fake slide? No, I don't think it was a fake slide. What I think it is is like you ease up and you think you're giving yourself up. It wasn't a fake slide, but he like, he like practically, which great agility by Josh Allen. He practically like gives himself up. Like he was about to slide, even though he didn't. And then just like stop, turns it on and then turned it on and get, so like the defense kind of like eased up. Everybody stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Like eased up because they were like, okay, we're just going to touch them. We don't want to get the 15. So, yeah, it was just one of those situations where the quarterback has a lot of power throughout the course of the game. He took advantage of the fact that he has a lot of power, which I don't have an issue with, and that's what happened. Yeah, I didn't think it was a fake slide either. Also, Josh Allen's not a guy to slide. Like, he's going to most of the time run you over. Cover up the rock. He'll cover up the rock and, like, try to run more, like, honestly. Yeah, so I was surprised when I saw people complaining about that play on Twitter um on i get it i i get it like i understand where they're coming from but like i just think it's a soft claim i think so too i i don't i don't think it was a fake slide is my final stance on it so no i I just wanted to see what your thoughts were on that no and, and like i said he he is utilizing the rules that he's allowed to utilize like there's a reason like he gets protected differently than everybody else he made an awesome play like that's pretty yeah, much that play was sick said. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all time great play. Like he what was that like a fifty six yard rushing touchdown? Like it was gross. Like there's not much more to say other than like, yeah, like you're you're fucking dialed in and yeah. I mean, yep. the, when he did that, I was like, are good. It, it, I did see. I didn't even think that it was a fake slide in real life. Like I kind of saw him like slow down a tad, but. That was be kind of because I thought it was because like he was trying to figure out where the hole was and like where he pause where he was going to go. But I did not think for a moment that he was about to slide. Josh Allen's a dude that's going to run you the hell over. No, probably. You think he's sliding? You're out of your mind. Um, Last game. My favorite game of probably maybe the entire year. Um, Detroit. Versus, I mean, Detroit versus the Lions. Lions versus the Rams. Detroit comes out on top 23 to uh, 24 to 23. Um, all, all time awesome game. Puka Nakua with just that guy is different. He, he, he like showed up like crazy in the spot, set a, a, a receiving record as a rookie in the playoffs. He balled. He had like 180, nine, nine receptions, like 180 some yards and a touchdown. Um, both quarterback. We lost him. Hello. You froze. You said both quarterbacks and then froze. Yeah, both quarterbacks played amazing, and we can get into like the nitty gritty of the game, but I think that there's one headline 
in this entire thing is the Rams misuse of their timeouts throughout the course of this game lost them this game. Um, at the beginning of the third quarter, Stafford burns a timeout. And then midway through the third quarter, Staff- Stafford burns a timeout and they're down to one timeout for the rest of the game in a playoff game, a close playoff game where pretty much every single moment matters. It felt like that was like completely like unnecessary. And at, at the, like the first one that they took, I was like, man, he probably should have taken the, the, the five yards. Yeah. The five yards and instead of the timeout, because I think the timeouts way more important than those five yards. And then lastly, when McVay looks back at this game and critiques it, what it's going to come down to is the use of shifts and motions on every single play that they come out and run. Like no matter what happened, they get up to the ball, Matt Stafford sets, somebody shifts, Puka motions, sta- uh, cup motions back forth. If that's the way that you're going to be playing, you're going to have to find a better process of getting those plays called into Stafford, Faster. lining up, cr- lining up correctly and getting the play out because that right there and the misuse of timeouts absolutely lost them the game. And other than that, it was an all time game. Fucking amazing. Yeah. I think if you're going to do that, you have to start going more no huddle. So then you're not wasting those couple valuable seconds at the very beginning um, of the clock. And that'll help you get into position longer because I'm all for the way that they run their offense with the shifts and the motions and everything. I think it really puts the defense at a disadvantage, but it doesn't do you any good if you're not getting a play called and a play off um, and you're losing five yards every time. Like you just have to be faster. And if that means going no huddle and calling it out of that, then so be it. But you're spot on. They they completely misused timeouts. I was that first time out in the in the third quarter. I thought the same thing. I was like, dang, that feels like they really didn't need to do that. Um, and it felt like with how close the game was, they would have ended up needing these timeout that time, all the timeouts they could get at at some point in, later in the game. But and they flat um, did. Like at the end I of the game, a, Jared yeah. Goff threw a slant to Amara to literally just like close, like absolutely just close the game where they could have just re- handed it off. And, and they were like, no, we're just going to Dan Campbell. Obviously this, that guy's insane. was like, no, we're yeah. ending this shit right now. Ended it amazing game, but go ahead. What were you going to say? I got two more things. Um, this was the moon game. Again, the moon never lies when it comes to the lions. Okay. Um, the last time the Lions won a playoff game, the moon was in. Uh, hold on here. Let me pull up the tweet. Let me see. What is that? I sent it to you earlier or during no, the no. week. What's a, t- what's a tweet? Uh, I don't know. What are, what are they called? <laughs> I don't know. An X. <laughs> An X. The moon was a waxing crescent. The last time the Lions won a playoff game, the moon on Sunday, the night of the game will be a waxing crescent. There you go. I said that to you. I didn't take the Lions minus three, but I did think they would win. I said, take the Lions minus three. The moon owns them. So um, the Lions are a big moon team. Got to keep that in mind for next week. But I had a take that I was ready to unleash if the Rams won this game. But I think I'm going to keep it in the oven and let it bake for a little bit longer. Um, but I'll, I'll I'll tell you what it is, but I'm not ready to completely stand yeah, on I was it. About to say, like, what is it? Like... <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say, I think that McVay is the best coach in the NFL um, if they won that game, but I'm, I'm not standing on that quite yet. Yeah. I think I'm he's leaving really, it in the oven. I think he's really good. Uh, I forget who, I think it might've been Joe house gave a, a timeout thing where he said that, Sean McVay led the NFL in most like unnecessary used timeouts, which I don't even know like how they track that stat or whatever, but um, it's gotta be like more than five. I shouldn't have said, I shouldn't have said it because it was, it was a, I can't remember the exact thing, but it pretty much like uh, what it kind of led to was the misuse of like timing in Sean McVay's like offense that like causes them to like lose games. And 
then that kind of being like the over underlying issue that happened was like a hundred percent but from from like a scheme perspective and like uh assessing talent and utilizing talent and developing players i completely agree with you i think that like i I think it's he's the best in the business and i don't think it's close Um, yeah i was i was talking to my dad about this and i told him i was like if i had to start a team and pick a head coach i'm i'm picking sean McVay. really yeah i'm bro i don't know i would pick probably dude they won a super bowl they sold their soul for a super bowl we're bro. projected to win five games and made it to the playoffs bro I, you know I, i'll take him but i'm still not i'm i'm not standing on him being the best coach yet so you're telling me right now today you you own you you own, you take ownership of the Philadelphia Eagles. You have a clean slate. You're telling me that you're going to hire Sean McVay over Matt Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Patricia. <laughs> it literally took you like 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 a like a second and a half to process that question. <laughs> you're like you're like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm completely trolling. I mean, I th- like I said, I think I regard like his like. I think a great inside look of everything that was uh, about the Rams was them watching Puka with Les and McVay and them being and them being like and McVay being like, we got a plan for that guy. Like he's going to be really good. And then Les being like, well, if we coach him up and do this on the third, like he'll be a gamer. It's like those guys like are different, like to be able to evaluate Puka in last year's draft (laughs) and then him break every single rookie record, which has been in place for 60 years, beating Jamar chase, beating Justin Jefferson, and then going out in his first uh, playoff game ever and setting a rookie receiving record with 188 yards, nine catches and a touchdown. Crazy. I mean, Puka Nakua that the evaluation and, and knowing that he would be good is, is honestly disgusting. Yeah. With how difficult it is to, get draft picks like correct McVay does it so well and there was a bunch of other guys that they had too like on the defensive side of the ball that were just no names and he turned them into I mean I still couldn't even tell you some of their names but um he turned them into some really good players and what everybody thought was going to be a rebuilding season he had these boys dialed in and were a couple plays away from winning a winning a playoff game when everybody thought you were going to win four or five games. So props to Sean McVay on pulling on having a great season, but I mean, even more to the lions. I mean, how, how electric do you think those fans were and how pumped do you think they were after that win? I can't even imagine. Yeah, I mean it's amazing. And and on top of that, like um like you get an easy draw. Like the Cowboys lose and then the Bucks beat the Eagles and then all of a sudden like you have that whole team was amped to play Dallas at at Dallas to beat them because of what happened earlier in the season. And then they have to play the fucking Bucks at home for a second home playoff game. So Man, absolutely luck of the draw for the Lions. Honestly, after that game, I was like, they could win the Super Bowl better than any but any of these teams. In my in my opinion, like their their run game is just it, it's lethal. Like David Montgomery, like came out and like just set the tone. Like he was dialed. So who knows what will happen, obviously, but yeah, I, I love the, the Lions moving forward. It was awesome to see them win, it, win a playoff game. For a team and an organization that has had like so much losing, I mean, that feeling of winning that, that playoff game for what the first one in 30 years had to feel like absolutely incredible. It had to feel like losing your virginity. Like, I don't know what that is, but like, it's got to be comparable. I don't even remember that feeling to be honest, but I I think you're right. Do you want some popcorn? (laughs) On your TO. 
Um, but yeah, I I think the Lions are in a great spot. I think realistically, the only team that can't win a Super Bowl at this point is the Bucks. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I think the Lions are going to handle them. The Eagles okay. suck. The dude, Eagles yeah. are bad. Okay, man. Yeah. Keep sleeping <laughs> on fucking Baker Mayfield, dude. Okay. I will. <laughs> I will. I, I I will continue to do that. I um, mean, the Bucks actually have a problem this offseason. Like, what are they going to do with him? Because he proved that he deserves to be a starting NFL quarterback. And do you pay Baker Mayfield Yeah, $30 million? Yeah, dude. Yes. You, it's not like the contracts, like when you're getting and you're not going to probably even have to what what did Jimmy G make like you're going to make like under 24 like what, you're probably going to get paid like what Jimmy G got paid like like realistically like how many other teams in the NFL are going to like who are they bidding against is is more of a question like it's not that's like that's why I think you don't pay, have to pay him that much that's why I think that but like as like a negotiation standpoint for the like the fucking agent like he'll probably bring up like the jimmy g contract it feels like yeah i i agree that seems like a reasonable contract but if there's nobody else calling for baker mayfield to come man the ship then you kind of got to take what you're given but that's going right like at a point like at a point like for any position like it's a going right thing like you're right like in, in a perfect world like that wouldn't be the case but it's like hey man like Baker's your quarterback. Like you got to pay him 22 mil. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so, but there's no doubt he's better than Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. And he's bro. I really do. Like, I think he's just, I think Baker like proved that he can like start, like, obviously like he's, he's like pretty decent. Um, like good for him. I mean, he's, he was the first pick in the draft for a reason. Like he can play football. Or is it just the fact that the Eagles are so bad because they scored nine points the week before? I don't think that like it, it's such like a week to week basis where like a team can put up nine points against a a defense against a dead Carolina Panthers defense, but then the next week come out and put up thirty nine points against the team that won the Super Bowl last year. Like that's just like how the NFL works. I will say that the Panthers defense is much better than the Eagles defense. For, so they're way a, better. A, a, plays a factor in it as well. Which is a it, it's that's a big red flag. It's sad. That's because, sad, sad. Because like it's really like, sad to say. Like how many players can you name on the fucking Carolina Panthers defense other than like Brian Burns and JC Horn? None. Yeah, exactly. Wait, so, there's a kid that went to Penn State that went there, right? Gross Matos, isn't he on the Panthers? I didn't even know he played still. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. Um Yeah, fuck that, dude. So, I guess the next thing that we can get into is uh the head coaching shit that's been kind of been transpiring over the last week. I mean, obviously, I think a lot of teams are like going to kind of I think it might be like a little slow until like the dust is settled a little bit, like maybe on like the playoffs, but um Bill check to the Cowboys absolutely dead. Um, he interviewed with the Atlanta Falcons, um, and I forget who said it. I think it might have been um, um, who who said it. I think it might have been Bill Simmons, or I forget who it is. But he was pretty much like Arthur Blank, like always goes big game hunting for like NFL head coaches, like when they're available. Was and- it a uh, Sheil and? Um- Fuck, what's the other guy that he was doing ben, it with? Yeah. Ben. Yeah. I think I it think, was on that. Yeah, they were pretty much like they always go big game hunting. They gave multiple like uh examples of like big name head coaches over the years that they've brought into there. Um I forget, I think RG3 said uh hire uh Dion. Um yeah, I saw that. That's not gonna happen, but uh yeah, I think I think that like and then Bill a report that is fairly saw uh rarely seen I mean was a report out of Bill Belichick's camp that said he wants to coach a talented young but underachieving team. I saw and that. just seems like you're going to go to the easiest division in football. You're going to go to a team that has a lot of great young talent 
a, a very decent defense and just missing that quarterback piece. But if they can figure that out, like if they can get like Kirk cousins or something, like, I don't know, man, like I kind of like the Falcons. So I think that'd be cool to see Belichick go to, go to the A. Uh, Harbaugh also interviewed for the Falcons job this week as well. I didn't see that actually. I saw him yeah. that he interviewed for the Chargers job. Yeah, I saw he might he might have it on a schedule to he might be scheduled to interview with the Falcons, but I know that I saw something about about him and the Falcons something. I thought I thought it said that they interviewed him, but um at the very least I think he's going to still interview for that position. Yeah. But I did see that that tweet about um kind of what Bill Belichick's looking for in that next chapter and um I mean the the Falcons fit that mold perfectly. Um, I was seeing some rumors about them potentially trading their eighth overall pick for something, or maybe it was the bears trading something. I don't know about, but something to do with the Falcons and trading a pick. Um, yeah, I saw that too. And I don't know. Listen, I like we've, we've been like the biggest Justin Fields truthers like ever. I don't think, taking Justin Field like what did Justin Fields get drafted at 12th? Oh, it was Justin Fields for the 8th pick is what I think it was. But what did Justin Fields get drafted at when he was in when he came I think out it was of like the 8 9 or 10, maybe 9 I think or it might 10. Have been 10. And so you're telling me that he's worth higher more more of a pick after and listen, we've been big Justin Fields truthers on this on this on this platform. And I like him, but I don't think the compensation makes much sense in my head for that to go down. So I don't know. I could see it happening if the Bears ultimately decide to move in that direction, but I don't know if it would be a true first. I mean, if you're the Bears and they offer you the number eight pick, I think you have to take it. Um, for what? on top. Of- You'll have the one, the eight, and the nine. I what mean, are you talking about? If you're the Bears and the Falcons offer you the number eight overall pick for Justin Fields, I think you have oh. to take that trade. Oh yeah, yeah, no. I mean, the bear for the Bears, yeah. it's an absolute like yeah, no. Yeah, fucking that's what brainer. that's what I yeah, said. Like, obviously, yeah, no, one hundred percent. Sorry but for the Falcons. No, no, you had me worried. I was like, am I losing my mind here? Um, but no, I think. The Falcons are literally one guy away, and I don't know if it's worth waiting because I don't know if – I don't think Caleb Williams is going to be there. I don't think Drake May is going to be there, and I don't think um, Jaden Daniels is going to be there. So, like – But what about J.J. McCarthy? You're either getting J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, or Michael Penix, and you can wait until the second, third, and fourth round to probably get all of those guys. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I, and like you said, thank you. Um, like you said, trading for the number, like trading your number eight pick for uh, Justin Fields is wild seeing that he was the 10th pick in the draft. Like uh, he hasn't gotten he's played that much worse. better. Yeah. yeah like, he hasn't played to a point where you're like, holy shit, we have to get this guy right now. Let's give up the number eight pick. But also, and also, is that a guy that is that who wins you these who moves the needle for you if you're the Falcons? Like, are they Justin Fields away from being a Super Bowl contender? I think they're Kirk Cousins away. You think Kirk Cousins would be a better fit there for a Super Bowl? I think Kirk Cousins goes back to Minnesota and takes less money. I, but I don't, I don't I, know. I promise you on God's green earth that. Kirk Cousins is not like out on the market being like, how much less money can I take for my final real contract? Dude, that guy has made $900 billion. It doesn't he's the matter. Most paid quarterback of that all is time. the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Is like, <laughs> he's going to go take a pay cut to go play in Minnesota and maybe make a wild card. Like, dude, they have the Mall of America there, and we know yeah, that he yeah. likes Coles. Like, yeah, he's like, good there. Like, that shit is like, like, no, nobody in, like, I, I remember Trevor said this the one time when he was like, because I was like, you're going to have to pay CD and Micah and Dak and and Trevor was like well one of them are going to take a pay cut it's like 
none of these guys are it's going not gonna to be look... Micah. He hasn't even gotten a contract yet. Exactly. None of these guys are looking to take less money. You strike while the iron's hot, you have a professional career for let's just say a max it at the very best 10 years max. So you're going to tell me that like, you're going to maximize profits in that 10 years, like regardless of how much money you've made. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw the report saying that he would, that Kirk was potentially open to it. I don't know what's going to happen obviously, but I think ultimately I, Kirk wants to win a super bowl. Like I, I know that he said that in the Netflix show, like you have to at some point look at Minnesota and realize like we are very far off from a Super Bowl winning team. They're the third best team in that division. Yeah, exactly. So you could go. I mean, I I think you're right. I think it's a, probably a great fit in Atlanta. Um, but who knows? Who knows if Bill Belichick wants to go that route? I thought Bill Belichick kind of always liked Justin Fields, but I could be making that up. Yeah. Yeah, so or we'll see. you can I'm... just bring Mac Jones with them. Yeah, that's a great point. If you can get Mac Jones to stop selling cars, because that's where that guy should be. And then lastly, one that we I texted you this and was like, we're so stupid. We said this literally so long ago, but yeah. it was like in Gerard Mayo's contract that like whenever Bill Belichick was done, that like he would be the head coach. So dumb ass fucking shit by us to even entertain anybody else taking that job other than the guy who it was in his contract to take the job. So bad by us. Yeah, definitely a bad call on our part. Um, not remembering that we even mentioned that earlier in the <laughs> season. Um, I was just excited. It's literally the most obvious choice. Um, you don't put that in somebody's clause in somebody's contract. If you're not going to make them your head coach like the next year so um yeah bad bad vibes on our part but i think i think the pats got their guy um i'll be interested to see who he brings along as the oc in dc if he keeps billy o'brien or 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 what happens there all right divisional round let's go officially and I know that I publicly stated that I'm going to make a parlay fading the Packers and the Texans that would feed, quote, feed families. But I did that see that said nine and a half points is a lot of points in a divisional round. And the first game Texans at Baltimore. Um, my mortal lock of the entire season will be the Baltimore Ravens first half in this game. Um, but other than that, like, and I'm not trying to be a prisoner of the moment, but it just feels like the Texans can keep this thing way closer, like closer than, uh, over a touchdown. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I love nine and a half and it feels like every time that I've picked against the Texans, they have proved me wrong. Um, this Ravens defense, though, is absolutely no joke. Um, I think, if anything, it's going to be the Ravens offense um, that we see kind of take off a little bit. I think this is probably going to be a high-scoring game. I think I, – I don't know how good the Texans defense is. Like, they haven't – Play, like playing against Joe Flacco, great. Playing against the Colts to end the season, great. That didn't neither one of those really moved the needle for me. Um, so I do like the over here. I was just looking at the weather, and it's going to be 24 degrees in Baltimore on Saturday. So keep that in mind. That's not warm, but yeah, I I like the Texans here. I like the magic that they've got going. Um, so I would take nine and a half too. Yeah, I also do did. think it's. I was gonna say I think it's great that we have like the four most fun quarterbacks playing in the divisional round, in the yeah, AFC ba- at least. Yeah, Baker, um, golf in the A in the AFC. Oh, um, and then you have the and then you have the island of misfit quarterbacks in the NFC. Yeah, you just talked me into it completely. Ravens minus nine and a half is a lock. Um, You're such a dick. 
<laughs> it is. You just talked me into it. It's just a, it's such a lock. It's disgusting. Okay. Next game. Packers at 49ers. Same spread. Nine and a half. Um, this is at 8 16 p.m. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I just think the Niners are hungry and are I think that their Super Bowl run that they envision going on at this point in time will be a dominant one. This is the game where I will fade. I, like I said, I'm going to make a parlay that will feed families that fade both of the teams that won last week. Um, Ravens minus nine and a half and then Niners minus nine and a half. I, I just think that I just think that they come out and and shit stomp them. Famous last words, obviously picking the two number one seeds who are favored by more than a touchdown. So we'll see how that plays out. And I do like the under in this game because too many points got scored last week. There was a stat about the number one seeds. Maybe it was about the Ravens, about them having like two weeks off and coming out rusty. Um, I can't remember what it is. Um I'm trying to find it. Divisional? Yeah. All right. Let me see here. Fuck it. I can't find it. Maybe later I'll find it. Um, yeah, I, I think this game, I think I might have to pick the Packers plus nine and a half here. Nice. Um, they just... I don't know. They just have something about them that they've been just playing so well. If they get up and take a lead, the Niners are not great when they have to come back from any type of uh, deficit. I don't know. I, the Packers are playing with house money. All the pressure's on the Niners, I think. Um, I, I like the Packers in this situation. I'm with you, though. I do like the under. I think... Um, defense has kind of come to play and for some reason like last week the Packers defense was like decent when it mattered and um do we have an update on Jair Alexander because didn't he get a little banged up last week or yeah I right? mean he's he's probably he's he's every banged up every week. week yeah he's hurt <laughs> like I have With no that clue being said, he'll probably have an interception yeah. um so yeah I, I like the Packers here plus nine and a half um Next game, Bucks at Lions. I do feel like six points is a lot in a playoff game. Um, Lions are at home. I just think they win this game. I think the Bucks like aren't that great of a team. I do like the over in this game, and I do think Mike Evans has like a legacy game because it just seems like every time he doesn't show up in one week, the next week he comes out and like balls. Yeah. I like that take as well. He also should have probably had like a hundred yards receiving last week, but the Eagles, but he dropped a couple passes. Yeah. Um, I, I think the lions, I like the over here. I think the lions Molly Wop, the bucks. Yeah. Absolute nuclear cum bucket play. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> The, this is yeah. I, I think I'm with you. I think I would coil or a super soak this game and um <laughs> and feed <laughs> families with it. Uh, last game, um yeah, I would ice spice yeah. shake the shit out of the lions on this one. <laughs> yeah. Last game, Chiefs at Bills. <laughs> this is like um <clears throat> this is like. This is like asking me to watch like like a. I can't even think of a good analogy. Your ex girlfriend hook up with your best friend. <laughs> worse, <laughs> it's worse than that. Like I would be fine with that personally, but with that being said, I like the Chiefs to win outright. Uh, I I think this I think this is the the get back game for the Bills. Josh Allen has been wanting this rematch for over a year it's finally in buffalo um i hope they throw snowballs at taylor swift in the booth um it 
the this will be the true tell tale of Patrick Mahomes is if he can win a away playoff game. Because this is the first one that he's ever had. No, this will be the true tale of Josh Allen if he can no. ever win a game that matters. Ever. You're you're right. When, it is when the but... stakes are high, if Josh Allen can ever win a game when it matters. If you're right, if Mahomes comes out and loses this game. It, it does not pussy. it does not matter and i am not a mahomes guy and i hate backing him up but this game the pressure is on the bills and it is on josh allen because if they cannot win at home it is going to be a big issue it is like blow it up like not the way that sean mcdermott would an- run the analogy but it, they would blow up the entire team because you can't lose to the chiefs at home when everybody in the space and in the NFL seem to have the same take that the chiefs are on a down year and you guys have been on an absolute shit stomping for the last month and a half. So I think that the pressure's on Josh Allen. We'll see how it goes. I think the chiefs went out, right? Hate to do it, but I think they do. I, I like the bills here. I think they actually pull it off at home. I do agree with you. I think it's a bigger game for the bills than it is for the chiefs, but I haven't been sold on this Chiefs team all year. Um, I think Josh Allen finally wins one against him. Um, He finally gets it at home. But how funny would it be if this goes to like OT and the Bills go down and kick a field goal and then the Chiefs get the ball and go down and score a touchdown and they lose in overtime because of the rule that the Bills bitched about having changed. I hope it. I hope that happens. I, I just like, I just, if I have to see one, like having to see both of these teams win this weekend was like practically hell on earth for me. Like it felt like I was wa- like, like it felt like my limbs were getting detached from my body while I was watching the games. Like, like what needs to happen to Matt Patricia? Dude. All right, dude. Let Matt get one more head coaching job and then we'll see. But <laughs> I would literally never watch the NFL if that happens. But yeah, I hate both these teams, but I just think that I would I would just like to finally see Josh Allen win a game when like the stakes are the highest and we'll see if he can get it done. Keep in mind the Bills are still undefeated since Sean McDermott endorsed Al Qaeda and there's that's another reason like why I want them to win is because um the memes are hysterical on Twitter whenever they win. Yeah, it is. <laughs> they are. So <laughs> I would not hate to see that. So um, do we do we think that um, Taylor Swift actually shows up? Dude, I don't give a fuck about Taylor <laughs> Swift. I, I like I listen. I'm sure that there's something in my life that I care about, but I absolutely like think her fans are just like so fucking annoying. I certainly agree. All right. I have some stats here. What about Taylor? Yeah. No. Um, the rookie dog betting history. If the Texans close around a nine point underdog and are able to take down the Ravens, CJ Stroud would join Mark Sanchez as the only rookies to win a playoff game as that hive and underdog. Um, I have one for the Ravens. Lamar Jackson has historically struggled as a favorite in the playoffs at home, a spot he finds himself in this week. Playoffs, he's one in three straight up and against the spread, and they're four and zero to the under. Home favorites are twenty eight and ten straight up, fifteen and twenty three against the spread. Of two hundred and twenty quarterbacks over the past twenty years, he is ranked two thirteenth against the spread as a home favorite. So, there's that. Oh, this was the stat, the rest stat that I was looking for. On 12 plus days rest, teams are one and six against the spread in the playoffs. Hmm. So it seems like probably the long spreads are the move potentially, and the favorites to win are probably the move. Yeah. So the past three seasons, minus three or higher spread is six and 16, minus seven or higher is one and eight. Um, this is just for Lamar worst mark of 32 quarterbacks. His only cover week one this season at home against the Texans as a nine and a half point favorite. (laughs) That's funny. 
Yeah, that's why I like I've kind of feel like the Texans can cover this spread and can potentially win this game is because it's hard to beat the same team twice. And like the Texans team that they played in week one is completely different than what they were. Yeah. And we, and like they haven't played a game in three weeks. Like like Lamar hasn't played a game in like three weeks. Like I don't know. Anything can happen, but um if Lamar loses this game, I I I'm gonna cry. Like I think that I'll genuinely cry. Yeah. I have a, a weather stat here. So the Texans team who plays in a dome will travel to Baltimore to play in about 20 degree weather. In the last 20 years, a team has played outdoors in sub 30 degree weather for the playoffs eight times. Those teams are two and six straight up losing by 10 points per game. The only two wins, the 2014 saints in Philadelphia and the 2005 Vikings in green Bay. Let's, let's do it. Uh, let me see here. Here's a stat that you'll actually like. So, Baker Mayfield is three and zero against the spread in his playoff career. Yep. He's one of two two quarterbacks three and zero against the spread or better in the playoffs since 1980. Jeff Hostetler finished four and one straight up and five and zero against the spread in the playoffs. The Bucks are six and six straight up and nine and three against the spread as underdogs this season. They were zero and four. That doesn't matter. Do uh, we Ruby Rose Max the Bucks money line? Ruby Rose Max. I think we sky breeze swallow the whole Buccaneers money line. I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think we have to. I do think six points a lot, but like, I don't know. All right. I've got a Mahomes one here. Mahomes is seven and three straight up and eight one and one against the spread as an underdog in his career. This will technically be Mahomes' second career playoff road game after he faced the Bucks in their stadium in the Super Bowl, a 31 to nine loss. So they were home in the Super Bowl, but it was in Tampa Bay. So that makes um, sense. Because, it, well, it's technically a way. Because yeah. It's, um, but yeah, you get me. Um, and the last that was a home years, game for the Bucs. Yeah. In the last 20 years, Mahomes is third QB to be undefeated straight up in the divisional and wild card rounds. Mahomes is 7-0, and Sanchez and Burrow 4-0, and Colin Kaepernick, Jimmy Garoppolo, Brock Purdy, 3-0, and 2-0. All right. You have to say Colin Cowherd. Colin Cowherd, 2-0 and against the spread. Um, Bills played near perfect versus the Steelers with no turnovers. Josh Allen is 13-8-2 against the spread after the Bills don't turn the ball over in their previous game. Including four ten and zero four ten and one against the spread in the last three seasons. So, against the spread in a game in the previous if the previous game Josh Allen does not turn the ball over, he's four ten and one against the spread in the next game. So that's not that's great. bad. Yeah, uh, Chiefs only. Al- yeah, Chiefs allowed only 16.7 points per game during the regular season and allowed just seven points in the wild card round. Allen versus teams allowing less than 20 points per game is 26 and one against the spread. So that's good. He's 26 and one against the spread. Mark is second best of the 247 quarterbacks in the last 20 years, just behind Tom Brady. So that's phenomenal. Some would say. Yeah. Um, all right, that's that's what I got for you for some divisional round stats. So that was brought to you by the Action Network. You're welcome, Action, for the free shout out. But yeah, there you I go. love the Action Network. So great, 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 great stats. And yeah, I, I hate to say it, but it just feels like a Mahomes weekend, unfortunately. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, cherish these next couple weekends, brother. We we only got a couple left. I'm ready for baseball season. Who's your team? Uh, who won the World Series last year? I'm not telling you. The Diamondbacks? No. Yeah, they did. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. That's my favorite team. Okay. Is that not who won last year? No. Yes, they did. 
They beat the Rangers in the fucking World Series. No, they didn't. Who won then? The Rangers. Wait, really? Yes. Oh, then the Rangers are my favorite. Team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's you're such a dick that's all i got dude all right well once we can do the we can do the uh mlb preview later but yeah the rangers won that series 4-1 so yeah that's my favorite team i know i was kidding well you didn't know. you didn't know i was because you told me the utmost confidence that the the diamondbacks won all right dude i was whatever all right all right, let's wrap it up. Go All birds. Right, See ya. What the heck was that? <laughs>